A former North West Coast man is experiencing life in coronavirus quarantine on the opposite side of the world. Chase Tucker is isolated 40 minutes outside Barcelona, Spain, and the adventurous Tasmanian has had to change his the routine. The of my quarantine life is that the mountain is right there, but I'm not really allowed to go and run and hike and climb. So today's video was meant to be about aerobic training and detailing some of the things I've learnt and the adventures that I've had on the mountain behind me. But given everything that's happened over the last week or two with coronavirus and how that impacts all of our adventures, how it impacts our training and what we're doing in the outdoors, I thought maybe that video could wait and instead we could dive into some of the solutions, some of the tools and some of the tips that I want to share with you that can help us adapt to the new circumstances that we're facing so that we can come back to the mountains next time being stronger, more focused, and just better at doing what we do in the mountains. This is a big topic, so I'm gonna be breaking it down into mindset, body, and gear. And it's a little bit windy out here, so let's hit the office and dive into this stuff straight away. Okay, so if you're new here, my name's Chase and this channel is all about mountain sports and how we can prepare our mind, our body and our gear for the mountains so we can get out there, challenge ourselves and grow from that experience and don't we have an opportunity for growth right now with what's happening with the world. I'm not able to get out into the mountains and I think many of you will probably find yourself in a similar situation very shortly, so I wanted to share with you some things that I've um, adapted uh, to my life over the last couple of days. This is my fourth day in quarantine. You know, for me, I'm right at the base of the mountain. Um, the National Park is a two minute walk from where we are right now. And I've been running every day up until the start of this week. So right now, as it stands, there's a 3000 euro fine uh, for me, if I'm caught out in the mountains, and in fact, my running partner, he uh, was caught by the police and said that they would let him off this time, but next time it's a 3,000 euro fine. So that really throws a spanner into the mix with my training. Uh, I'm preparing for an ultra marathon in July, the Buff Trail Epic. It's my first uh, competitive run so you know theoretically I can get out in the mountains and I can run and I can train however if I get lost you know if I roll an ankle um, I'll need to call emergency services for help that would be endangering the people from the emergency services not to mention I would be wasting their precious time when they're already under a lot of stress and also I'm putting myself and everyone around us at, at, at an extra risk and for me that's just not worth it. So for once in my life, I have to encourage you not to go to the mountains. <laughs> um, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's get into the mindset stuff because this is super, super important. Obviously, all of our training depends on whether we're able to be stable and consistent with our mindset, whether we're able to you know, switch our brains on to get us out of bed to do the training. And the first thing I think that, is, uh, that we should touch on is being optimistic and being positive. Today I was going through Facebook and I came across a post from Adventure Consultants. You guys might know them from uh, being one of the big businesses that runs commercial trips on uh, Mount Everest. And it was from Guy Cotter, who's the leader of the business. And he says, to be a successful mountaineer, one must be optimistic. A pessimistic mountaineer can always find excuses for not continuing onwards. So I read that quote from Guy and I thought that that was such a good message to, to share with you guys. You know, I don't want to play down the severity of this pandemic at the moment, but I think that being optimistic is the number one thing that we can keep in mind, especially as we go through a lot of change in our day-to-day -day lives. So one thing that's really helped uh, over the last couple of years for me that I've been doing solidly is journaling. So uh, journaling for me is both important for training journaling, so writing down the training that I've been doing and, and really thinking about how has that training helped me over you know the last phase of training that I've been doing. 
the way that I do journaling is I follow a basic five minute uh, journaling structure that comes from Tim Ferriss. I write down three things that I'm grateful for in the morning. Uh, I write down three things that would make today great. And that's essentially my to-do list, things that I'm working on. And I write down three affirmations. And generally they're to do with you know, my training or uh, my self-confidence or something about myself that I'm trying to improve at the time. If that takes me five minutes, very easy to do in the morning and something that has been super useful for me uh, to, just to learn how to journal and to learn how to reflect. I think that journaling is not so much a process of writing down what you're thinking. It's really a way to understand what you're thinking. In terms of the, the mindset, kind of situation that we're in yes we're going to be locked inside for the most part if you aren't already you probably will be in future and that's going to be challenging the thing for me uh, you know I'm in day four and I realized about day three that I do need to adapt and to set some serious kind of boundaries about what I do first thing in the morning so having uh, a daily movement practice first thing in the morning to go straight to that to work on my body to work on my mind with a lot more uh, restriction comes a lot more freedom so many of you will probably have to work from home in the near future and that does give you a lot more freedom to structure your own time that is uh, some of the positives that come out of being locked in your own home and not really be able to leave I would love to make a video about mental strength and how to uh, curate it, how to create it in the future. But until that point, there is a mental strength blog post on my blog that you can check out and I'll link to that in the description. All right, that's probably enough on the mindset side of things. Let's dive into training. What are we going to be doing with our training over the next couple of months as we see ourselves locked inside our own homes? And clearly some things are going to have to change because gyms are shut down. Um, national parks, in some cases, are shut down. They certainly are for me. They probably will be very soon in the United States and Canada. Um, and so things are going to have to change with our training. I think this is a great opportunity to take a step back and have a look at the bigger picture. So what I mean by that is, what are we going to be doing in three to five years? What kind of mountains are you going to be climbing? What kind of uh, mountain sports are you going to be doing? What skills do you want to have? And so like taking a big zoomed out uh, view of who you want to be and what you want to be doing in three to five years, this is the perfect time to do it because usually we don't have time to make these decisions. We're uh, rushing for a certain deadline for a trip that's coming up that you want to get on. So this is a really great chance to have a look at those long-term goals, those things that seem outrageous, the things that have been in the past, maybe you've felt like they were out of the range of what you could possibly do. Now is the time to bring those things into range in that, that next five, uh, three to five years, pick those goals and start working backwards from there. That's where I want to be in five. So this is what I want to be doing in three. Uh, this is what I need to be doing two years or and, and one year from now. And optimistically speaking, Hopefully everything's back to normal. We do have the luxury of, of time in a way to step back and to assess and to test and analyze what's working with our training. Um, that's where that journaling process really comes in handy. But uh, a lot of the time, these time constraints uh, that people have when they start training with me are very, very limited. You know, it's like three to six months. And when we have those time constraints, we need to work on the, the low-hanging fruit, the aerobic capacity, the lack of strength, and then also preparing to be durable, to be injury-proof. They're, you know, the top three things on my list. So with this extra time at hand, a lot of that can be analysed at a greater level. So uh, what's happening with our deeper core strength, our mobility, how do our joints move? Are they lubricated? Are we injury-proof? Are we building stability and mobility? And are we activating the smaller stability muscles that support uh, the greater movements and the greater muscles? Because a lot of the time, those muscles are asleep. 
very atrophy over time from all of the sitting that we're doing at a desk throughout the day. So without the time constraints of having to go straight into a hugely intensive aerobic uh, and strength building phase, we can step back, we can look at those weaknesses that we all have to start addressing those. We can step back and test and analyze where they are within our body by doing things like a daily movement practice and by doing things like stretching and movement drills to find out where those potential uh, limitations are. So that's a really good opportunity that we have there just to get to know our bodies a little bit better. You know, and there is nothing stopping you from training at home. I do the vast majority of my training at home. I have done for the last year and a half. I haven't had a gym membership during that time. I've spent a lot of time out in the mountains and the, the rest of the training has just been done on the floor at home using my own body weight and some resistance bands at most. So there is so much that you can do for your training at home. And you guys have seen on my channel, there's a lot of videos about uh, body weight training, uh, follow along videos that I have. I'll link them up in the description if you haven't seen them already. But all of those videos can be applied at home. And when you step outside of the gym, when you move away from the weights, it does provide a challenge, but also an opportunity not, and not only to learn your own body, but, but also to use our imagination in our training to learn new things, to adapt, to move away from a more traditional style of training into something that is applicable with just your own body. I think there's a huge opportunity in, in that as well. And thankfully, over the last 18 months, I've been doing that. I've got hundreds of videos uh, in my programs, and I'm looking forward to sharing some of those, both on the channel and obviously in my new programs that are coming out this year as well. We talked about the physical side of training, but one of the most important aspects uh, of training and preparing for the mountains, especially when it comes to mountaineering, is just the knowledge uh, side of things. So this is a great opportunity just to read a book. I think that uh, 80% of the preparation for mountains comes down to what's up here uh, and what's in here, as opposed to the physical side of things. So things like learning some theory surrounding avalanche rescue and avalanche danger and getting to know different types of snow that can be really helpful learning about snow safety practicing knots there's so many things that you can learn that are on the rope and rock climbing side of things that are very useful to know then we've got navigating there's so much to learn on the navigation side of things nutrition and even like exercise science if you look at uh, Killian Jornet, who is from around this area, he's well known as one of the greatest mountain runners ever. He spends the time that he's not training, he's, he spends his time reading up and being interested in his own sport and particularly with exercise science. That guy reads a lot. He is his own coach. He doesn't have a coach. He, he has to understand all that. And if you want to take on that role for yourself as being your own coach and learning more, then understanding some exercise science uh, just the bare minimum is super super important i have just finished off a 9000 word ebook that i'm publishing in uh, just a couple of days i'll link it up here that you can check out soon that covers a lot of the most crucial information that you need to know so that is some extra reading that you can do in your extra downtime that I would highly encourage you to get into over the next couple of months if you end up in a situation like I am. And the last thing that I would like to mention in terms of training and keeping things positive and optimistic is just have a week off. <laughs> this is a great opportunity for me. I've been doing um, you know, 60, 70 kilometer weeks of running. I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy a cerveza and uh, just appreciate the fact that I can't go running. At least for the first week, I'm sure I'll get to you very soon. Okay, we've talked training and we've talked mindset. Let's get into gear and uh, discuss some of the things that we can do to prepare our gear given the situation that we're in over the coming weeks and months ahead. So I think this is a really good opportunity to have a look in detail at the gear that you have, what kind of condition is it in. Uh, if This is especially important if you're a rock climber and you're relying on um, you know, ropes and cams and 
nuts and all the rest of it? When does it need to be replaced? When does it need to be retired? Uh, and when does it need to be repaired in some cases? Now, I wouldn't recommend doing that with rock climbing gear, but you know, things like how to fix that hole in your jacket, patch your own tent, backpacks that you've got, we can apply the extra time that we have and this beautiful resource we have called the internet to learn how we can repair our own gear, not only to reduce our own consumption, but to also just build those skills that are really useful. Great time to take a stock of the gear that we have, go through it and just make sure that uh, it's in top condition. So when all of this blows over, we can go back to the mountains with uh, gear that is ready to go. Or you could, you know, just go climbing in your kitchen and put it on your scram. <laughs> Another good thing about having all this extra time before we go out on any kind of adventure is that you have time to do your own research, not only in terms of the trips that you're going to do, which I mentioned earlier, but uh, you've got the time to research and go shopping for just the right products for you. So I used to work in outdoor retail in um, mountain designs in Australia and people would often be coming in at the last minute What's the best jacket for this? What's the best hiking boots for that? Now is a good opportunity to uh, learn a little bit more about gear and to do your own research and to find the right product for you. I really encourage you guys to to buy right, to buy once. Um, Even if it is a little bit more on the expensive side, I think that making those, especially those big gear decisions, If you buy well, you buy a good quality piece of gear that's going to last you, you know, five, ten years or more, then that is 100% worth it. So doing the research and learning a little bit about the, the gear to find the right piece of gear for you is going to be a super useful thing for you to do with your time uh, that you maybe would have spent out in the mountains. So I think we really have an opportunity for us as humanity to perceive life a little bit differently, to make some adaptions to our general routines that perhaps have us on these loops that we're kind of stuck in. This is a really good opportunity to kind of break out of that, to do something different. And uh, and like I said, to kind of zoom out and look at the bigger picture. We are going through a part of uh, history, which is no doubt going to be memorable um, for all the wrong reasons. But I think that being present now and understanding what we're going through to help support one another so that we can, you know, hopefully get through it as a, as a group of people and eventually get back to some normality and get back out into the mountains and continue the, the journey that we're on together. I'm hoping that this is going to be some sort of beneficial catalyst that will push us as humans in a better direction i think that remains to be seen but yeah there is some positives to be taken away from this uh i want you to stay safe and uh look after one another and uh one more thing i have uh like i said that ebook slash new program coming out in the next couple of days probably it might even be out already i'll link it up here if it's done this is my cheapest program that i've ever released It's only, at the moment, $10, and uh, it is by far the most detailed program that I've ever released. It is doable for absolutely everyone, challenging for absolutely everyone because of the way that it is designed. So that's going to be my program that I put everybody on. Everyone new from this point onwards will go through that as almost like a graduation process. So that is the perfect place to start is called uh, Elements and it will be on my website very shortly. Thanks for watching guys. If you've got questions, comments, feedback for me on this, please put it in the comments section below. I look forward to reading them. I read all the comments. I'll see you on Summit. There's a 3,000 euro fine standing between me and the mountains. He's keeping fit though, showing his followers on social media how you can stay active in tight confines and he's got a message for friends back home contemplating quarantine. Don't freak out, it's really not that bad. It's actually kind of fun. I get to uh, spend more time kind of reflecting. It's not clear how long the Spanish government will maintain the isolation rules. Good old Chase Tucker, sounds like dinner time. Enjoyed this win news item? 
Like, tag or share with friends.